Hey mamas, and welcome back to The Balanced Mom. I get so many questions about Singapore math, so let's dive in and answer some of those. So I've done two videos on this channel talking about Singapore dimensions and Singapore US edition. I also brought up another one that's from a different company, but yet still uses the Singapore method. And so I wanna dive into the Singapore math and answer some of the questions that come with dimensions and US edition. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background before I dive into these. If you haven't seen the two previous Singapore videos, comparing the two and then mentioning how we use dimensions was the other video. I just wanna give you my background, which is I am a math high school teacher. Now, obviously I teach the kids, but I did that for several years and I have a degree obviously in secondary education and a mathematics degree on its own. So with that said, let's dive in and answer some of these questions. So one of the biggest questions I get is, can my child just start in a later year if they didn't use Singapore from the beginning? And the answer is yes. They can dive in at any point in the Singapore curriculum. Now, there are some benefits with starting from the beginning versus starting, let's say, in fourth grade or fifth grade. The biggest part is just the foundation that they get using Singapore. Singapore does a really good job using number bonds. That really helps the child separate numbers, move numbers freely around without being told what to do. So, for example, if they're adding eight plus seven, instead of just being told to count up, so let's say you would tell them eight plus seven, they put seven fingers up and they go eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Usually students are told to do that. And so there's not a lot of thinking involved. They just follow the steps that you told them to do. Now, with Singapore instead, they would break down the eight and the seven. They would do eight plus seven and break down the seven into two and five. So this is really quick mental math. They're pretty much adding eight plus two plus five really quickly instead of eight plus seven. It might sound confusing, but honestly, it takes less than three seconds to like get an answer. And it starts off slower. They're obviously writing the numbers and separating them. Them. And it seems like it's a waste of time. It seems like it's taking up so much time, but in reality, in the long run, they become such strong math students that it just becomes secondary to them. It's so easy for them to do, and they're not sitting there counting up or taking time to get an answer for such a simple question. So if your child does start in the later grades, they still have their own benefits, but I think that is one of the biggest benefits of Singapore math, just the foundation that a child builds with it. They will have a very, very solid understanding of how to move numbers numbers around and how to do a lot of the mental math. I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna mention it again. Sometimes it comes naturally for them to do it, but oftentimes the way a strong math student applies the problems, like the method I just showed you using Singapore, is actually taught to the other students. And so I feel like it kind of becomes an even ground for all students. The students who would have never thought of using this method are actually exposed to it instead of just being told, hey, use this counting up method. I will tell you strong math students do not use the counting up method. They actually on their own figure out, oh, I just need to move that over. Okay, this is my answer. And so that's just a really nice approach where students that struggle in math still are taught how to think through the process. Another question that I get often is so should I use the US edition Singapore or should I use dimensions and that's honestly just a personal preference I switch between the two not because I like one more than the other honestly it's just because as I mentioned before on this channel my kids and I just get really bored of repetition we like to see different textbooks different workbooks we like to see things laid out differently so that becomes a struggle when you're using you know the third year or the fourth year and the layout is exactly the same so I like to switch it up with them and keep their attention that's actually one of the reasons why I also include other math curriculums at times during the year to kind of just switch it up, have a different layout, have different ways of asking questions. I really like that well-rounded approach. So one of the things that you should know is typically, personally, when I use the US edition, I always add the extra practice in. And that's because I feel like they go really well together. They kind of play off one another. Some people will make them correspond. I really don't. I just treat them kind of more independently. So I don't wait for them to finish a particular lesson to approach it in here. And that's because it doesn't like even out. It's not like lesson one goes with lesson one and lesson two goes with lesson two. And so I just basically figure out my own approach to how many lessons will they do here and how many lessons will they do here. And I just teach it as we go through it. Dimensions on the other hand is pretty much just a standalone. There's no other like book that you can use with it. I mean, of course you could do extra practice with it if you'd like, but it's not really like as cohesive as the other ones. And so if you're using dimensions, there could be times when your child is really struggling with something and you will have to pull another resource out, whether you're Googling it or supplementing with another curriculum if needed, like I said, if they're struggling. Otherwise, it's a really good program just as a standalone. Now, one of the biggest questions I've been getting, at least in the last few months, has been about the new Singapore curriculum 
curriculum, which is actually something that I've been meaning to share with you guys. It is not a curriculum written by Singapore, the actual Singapore company. It's written by a company called Marshall Cavendish. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. So the 2022 edition is not written by Singapore, but the other editions, they actually co-wrote together. And so it does have a Singapore approach. I love the Singapore method. And this is something I did reach out to the company to clarify. I didn't want to give you guys wrong information. So that is 100% what they told me. And so I was really disappointed that they would take a different company's curriculum and sell it under their own like brand. And the reason I think this bothers me more is the fact that we are trusting Singapore as a standalone company. And so it's one thing to correspond with a company, write it together and then release it. But it's another thing to actually just allow a company to write it and then say, okay, well, we'll sell it for you underneath our brand, under our umbrella. It seems a little bit deceitful. That's my personal opinion, but that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Obviously you can check it out, see if you like it, but I'm gonna stick with Dimensions or the US edition. I still think they're really, really strong curriculum. I should mention Dimensions Math was written purely by Singapore alone. And so it's hard because on the US edition, yes, they collaborated on Dimensions, it's just written by Singapore. And then on this new edition, it's not written by Singapore. So I'm not really sure what to think of it. I was going to actually buy it and check it out. And I was just, honestly, there's no need to. I think these other two editions are just absolutely fantastic. Knowing me, I probably will at some point suck it up, buy it and check it out. But for right now, I have a lot on my hands. Obviously I have a newborn. So who knows, maybe this next year I'll check it out. But for now, I'm gonna stick with these two editions. In case you're like, whoa, I'm really fired up about this. Why I'm so bothered by them selling it under umbrella. I think I wouldn't be as bothered if they actually labeled it by the company that wrote it. That way it seems like it's super honest and open and it doesn't seem hidden. When I found out, I felt like it was a bit more hidden. So that's the only thing. Honestly, this is again, my own personal opinion, nothing against them. That's just my initial thought on it. I might look at it and absolutely think it's amazing and maybe it's an improvement from both editions. I'm not sure. I really struggle to believe that's the case, but again, I will keep you guys posted. This is just my initial thought. Once I reached out to them, got some clarification on what this new edition is. Why is it even needed? That was kind of what I was confused about. I mean, they just released Dimension recently. And so it was kind of confusing on why are we having another edition? I know a lot of families struggle with some other companies that release things so often. Some people love it, but some people are like, you know, I want several kids to go through it. Them releasing new ones makes me feel like the old ones aren't good enough. And so that's kind of the initial thought that I had. Like what's wrong with Dimensions? Why are we coming out with a new edition? That really took me by surprise. And that's probably a big part of why this is my reaction to it. I get a lot of questions on how it compares to actually great level, I would say it's on point with grade level. Some people say it's more rigorous. It is rigorous, but I wouldn't say it's ahead a grade. It's just rigorous in the grade that you currently teach. So if I'm teaching my fifth grade child, the fifth grade Singapore, it's a rigorous fifth grade curriculum. Otherwise, it's not a grade ahead or anything like that. It is a very solid one though. I definitely do not think that it's watered down too easy or too simple in any way. And lastly, I get a lot of questions on how to approach actually teaching it. If you aren't taught this way, can you actually teach the Singapore way? And my answer is a solid yes the teacher manual and the way the workbooks are laid out really does teach it in the Singapore way. So for example, they really stick to having problems horizontally instead of vertically. That way it encourages the child to move things over instead of just stacking on counting up and then writing down your answer. You will also notice a lot of the lessons, they're so well laid out that sometimes you don't even have any teaching to do at all. Like it's an open and go for the student alone. And so I noticed that really early on, I was like, I really really like it. They lay it out in a way where, you know, you teach them maybe a few lessons and then they're kind of on their own again. And then they get lost again and you teach them again the new lesson. But a lot of things kind of can stand alone and they can learn it just by going through the lesson. So I love that without it being super wordy, a lot of explanation, not at all. It's just the visual aspect of it that they do. As I mentioned before, they do have the teacher guide. Of course, you can use it alongside the book. I typically avoid the textbook just because it is purely kind of the workbook in a colorful format. I use the teacher guide and I think that's enough to reference back to, to provide an example. They give you enough games and different ways to use manipulatives. And so I think that's enough personally for me. So I usually just skip the textbook altogether, but I know that when I first started, I actually did use the workbook, the textbook and the teacher guide. And now I just stick to the teacher guide and the workbook. Those are pretty much the most common questions I get overall. I do get specific questions. And so if you have any, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I will gladly 
answer it to the best of my ability. Let me know what you guys would like to see more of in terms of Singapore, other curriculum, back to organizing or decluttering. I mean, just let me know and I'll do the best to accommodate that. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys next week.